Okay, so Yvonne occupies a very special position in the aviation industry because we're sitting with 3% of women in aviation and that is quite an achievement in this day and age but it also speaks eons about where we are in the industry in terms of empowerment and first of all thank you for coming to the convention and for participating in this interview and what I'd like to do is just get straight down to business and get, get to it. Um, as I say, the elephant in the room is SATMA, is the, single, is the single African air transport market. So it was introduced in, um, in January and so far we've got 28 states that have signed up. But only 16 have actually signed the Memorandum of Understanding. And this is critical to its success. Now, Rwanda Air has, has done that and has signed it. So, I want to ask you, what has Rwanda Air gained from signing that? And then I'm going to take you forward and I'm going to say to you that Let's pretend it's successful, everybody's signed. What would be the biggest gains for your airline? Okay, um, thank you Heidi. Uh, good morning everybody. Uh, it's actually Rwanda that signed uh, SASM. Uh, although it's, uh, we are passing to that, uh, Rwanda, SASM hasn't really kicked off. We're still working based on the bilateral air service agreements which are in, in a lot of cases are, are very restrictive in terms of the frequencies uh, that, that the airline can operate, uh, fifth freedom rights, um, the points that you can access uh, within that country. So uh, we haven't seen yet uh, uh, the benefits of SATA, but we do believe that once it does kick in, it, it's bringing a lot of, uh, a lot of be benefits for airlines, not just run there, all airlines. Uh, it will make it much easier uh, to connect to different points, especially within the within the African continent. It will allow us to launch routes much faster. It will allow, it'll allow airlines to leverage off fifth freedom rights. Uh, it will bring down costs because uh, with greater connectivity, easier connectivity, uh, fares will go down. We'll be able to transport uh, more passengers, so traffic will go up. So, so it will be a benefit to, to the citizens of different countries. Okay, so then as CEO, why do you think, in general, African airlines are struggling to, to get to grips with this? With SATAM specifically? Yes. Um, I think the main challenge is, that in a lot of cases, there's political will uh, to facilitate open skies, but uh, some airlines are, uh, I guess, uh, some level of protectionism as well. They want to defend their market share. Uh, and they believe that allowing full access to other airlines will dilute their market, their market share, which is not necessarily the, 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 uh, um, the case. Uh, so a big part of it is that, that the fear of losing market share for, for a lot of airlines. And we also have uh, other, other scenarios where uh, countries don't have national airlines but are still very unwilling <laughs> to open up their skies, uh, most likely for the, the future airline. So we find all these uh, cases. So is it a, a lack of perception? Is it a lack of um, the fact that it hasn't, the message hasn't been sold properly? Um, I don't know if, not necessarily the message hasn't been sold, uh, uh, hasn't been explained uh, uh, properly. Um, I think there's, there's also a certain level of um, um, uncertainty in terms of how it's going to be implemented. The, the key clauses which need to be discussed um, uh, anti-competition rules, etc., which need to be discussed with airlines to give them that level of comfort that this is a positive uh, addition to the aviation industry. Yes, if I can just say, I think if we get that, if we get that right, then it should start to unpack. Okay. So I'm going to just talk now a little bit about One Air and your roots, 
And the first one I'm going to ask you, um, the first question that I'm going to ask you is about your planned route to the USA. We know that's been on the cards. Um, I think I had down as June. No? When were you due to launch this? Um, for, for the US route, uh, that's been a bit of a moving target uh, because of the complications of getting all the permissions uh, down. We received the economic authority about a year and a half ago, uh, which allows us to uh, operate in the US on code share or wet list, but we want to do, operate it directly. So we have to go through the CAT1 uh, certification as well. So we're in the process of going through that. Uh, the Civil Aviation Authority in Rwanda, uh, they finalized the technical review by the FAA, which was positive. Uh, they're now going to go through the FAA audit as well in the coming months. And then based on the outcome of that, we'll be able to uh, target our scheduled launch date, which, which is most likely going to be next year. Okay, can you be a little bit more specific? I can't, without, <laughs> we, we got, without knowing when the FAA audit is going to be and uh, the outcome of that, uh, it's, a, it's a bit difficult to tell. Okay, all right, great. And then um, I believe you're going to try, or you have already launched a, a Chinese leg uh, we will be launching Guangzhou uh, next month on June 18th. Okay. Yes, okay. which will be tagged to our existing Mumbai route. Okay. Yes. And so, um, what were the reasons for including that in in your whole scheme? And what are the benefits? What benefits will that bring to the airline? Um, given the growing relationship between uh, China and the African continent, uh, this is a very uh, uh, commercially viable and strategic route uh, for Rwanda. Uh, Rwanda also has a close relationship uh, with, with, with China, as do most African countries. Uh, we have a lot of traders uh, going to purchase goods uh, from China, especially Guangzhou, uh, to bring them back to sell within the, within the continent. There's a lot of business uh, opportunities going on between the two, uh, uh, between the continent and China. So this is a very uh, strategic route for us. Absolutely. Okay, now I'm going to shift to economy and to finances. <laughs> Have to. Rwanda continues to receive financial support from government. It's rather like the government of South Africa where I come from, sorry, SAA where I come from. It also relies on support from government. So what's the current financial situation of Rwanda? And um, can you foresee um, profit profitability at any stage in the future? Um, yes, I, uh, definitely. Uh, I do foresee profitability, but uh, currently we're really mu we're very much in the uh, growth phase of, of, of the airline. Uh, so there's a lot of investment being done uh, by the company and the government um, in terms of uh, uh, getting new aircraft, uh, opening new routes. Uh, we've opened, uh, we just recently opened Kinshasa, we're opening uh, Guangzhou and Tel Aviv next month. We have Rwanda coming up. So there's, there's a very rapid growth uh, happening right now. But in the long term, we are working towards uh, profitability. Uh, we don't want to be dependent uh, on the support of government indefinitely. Uh, so the, the, we are putting measures in place to ensure that uh, we, we are able to be profitable and support the airline on our own. Okay, could you go into a little bit more detail perhaps and describe your approach or your strategy um, to this problem and tell us just a little bit more about it. Um, a number of ways. Uh, we're looking at optimizing our revenue, increasing our yield um, through our revenue management. Uh, we're looking at cost-cutting cost measures as well, uh, cost control. Um, and this comes in various forms, whether it's through automation of a lot of our systems. Uh, we are looking at building local capacity. We're currently very dependent on uh, expatriate pilots. Uh, majority of our pilots, out of uh, close to 200, only 35 are local, are Rwandese. So we're working towards uh, growing this number and re reduce the, the dependency on expatriate pilots as well as the cost of, of having uh, expatriate pilots. So together with our sister company, uh, Akagari Aviation, they've started an aviation academy where they're training uh, pilots for us. Um, they've started with the 25 currently and they're scaling that up. Um, so that's going to go a long way in terms of uh, reducing our cost. 
Uh, we're looking at setting up our own MRO. We're currently very dependent on different MROs, uh, outsourced uh, MROs. Um, because of our fleet diversity, we have three different uh, MRO companies working for us. So we'd like to be a bit more independent on that front. So uh, there's a big project working towards uh, setting up our own, uh, our own MRO as well. Uh, so all these measures uh, will, uh, will help us in terms of cutting down our costs, uh, and scale up our operations. Yeah, that sounds really exciting. Okay, so I'm going to turn now to technology and the digital advancement that we have. And I'm going to say that um, in January, th January this year, you um, put together, or you rather implemented the Amadeus system in all your various sectors across that. So can you just briefly describe or tell us what has that done to enhance customer experience? Um, yes, we, we uh, migrated to Amadeus, uh, we just finalized the migration uh, recently, uh, so our reservation, ticketing, um, DCS, loyalty, e-commerce uh, are all on Amadeus now. Uh, and this has gone a long way in terms of improving our customer experience, especially for e-commerce. Uh, we, we had a lot, out of, on a daily basis, we had so many complaints about, from our customers about booking online and the transactions failing, uh, that has dropped uh, by close to 98%, uh, which, is, which is fantastic for us. So we're seeing traffic uh, going up in terms of online bookings, which will translate into savings as well for us. Um, so that's been, that's been very good. Uh, in terms of on the loyalty side, um, it's made it much easier for our passengers to redeem uh, their tickets, uh, to redeem their miles for tickets, uh, much faster, much easier. Uh, the uh, the check-in process um, is going much more smoothly now as well. Uh, so we, we have seen uh, a big improvement with, with, with this uh, recent migration. Sounds, sounds really good. Um, do you have any more plans in store? Do you have yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. So we will be uh, we're currently implementing a uh, BRS system as well. Uh, we're implementing uh, the Lufthansa scheduling system. Uh, price, a new pricing system, a new CRM, a sales CRM uh, system as well. So there's a lot. This is the year of automation for, for one day. For one day. Yes. Gee, that sounds fantastic. I'm glad. I'm, I can't wait to hear some more about this. Now I'm going to just turn to um, your unique position. You're a smallish country. Um, you're landlocked. And I think you've got a little 12 million how do you, as CEO of Rwanda, tackle this and then bring success to your country through overcoming these challenges? Um, yes, Rwanda is a very small country, the size of Maryland, tiny, and one of the most densely populated countries in Africa. Um, although it's a small country, it's a very ambitious country. <laughs> and it's in a very fast uh, growth trajectory. Um, uh, we have a GDP growth of uh, close to 8% year on year. Uh, we've been developing uh, very fast over the last 25 years after the tragedy um, that happened. Um, and uh, the government has rec recognized that uh, aviation is the key uh, is a key pillar of the economy. So uh, the airline is is critical in the development of the economy of the country. So as as the airline, we really work to support uh, the ambitions of, of the country. Which, uh, which means uh, Rwanda being landlocked, uh, air transportation is critical for us. Uh, so we are not only connecting Rwanda to the rest of the world, but we are also connecting other Africans to, to the rest of the world. Um, so uh, what, what, what the airline has done uh, with, with the fast growth that the airline has been experiencing, uh, we, we can see the impact of that in the economy. Uh, a few years ago, the key, the, the, the number one foreign exchange runner for Rwanda was coffee and tea. Now, the number one foreign exchange runner is tourism. Uh, so, uh, because Rwanda is now uh, very well connected to the rest of the world, we've seen a huge rise uh, in tourism in the country. Uh, and that's not only the airline, but also the policies the government has put in place, making sure the, the, the country is safe, uh, this country is, is clean, uh, the infrastructure is in place, so we have hotels, etc. Uh, removing uh, barriers to entry, uh, all citizens receive their visa on arrival in the country, 
We've seen uh, Rwanda growing to number three in terms of hosting international conferences after South Africa and Morocco. And that's happened over the last, uh, just the last few years. Uh, so the airline is very much uh, at the center of uh, de the development of the economy. We've seen uh, uh, exports of flowers and uh, fruits and vegetables uh, shooting up. Our cargo revenue has been growing uh, double digits, uh, close to 70% year on year. Uh, so that's, that, that's really the role of the airline in terms of developing the economy. Looks to me like you're giving Ethiopian Airlines quite a run. <laughs> no, we're, we're partners, really. So we work together well. No, that's fantastic. Okay, and then um, just on a personal note, because um, you are a woman in leadership in aviation, and um, there are a lot of challenges that you must have to have faced in order to get to where you are. So perhaps what I'd like to do is just ask you, if you could just take a step back. You've only been in the position for a year. Um, just share some insights um, about what that was like. Well, um, I joined Rwanda, I've been at Rwanda for two years. Uh, two years ago, I was appointed the deputy CEO in charge of uh, corporate affairs and then uh, CEO a year ago. Um, so the year before, that was a good entry point uh, in terms of learning about the ABH because I came from a totally different, uh, uh, yes, from uh, the telecoms background. Uh, so learning about the aviation industry, which is extremely difficult. So I think it's the, it's the most complicated business uh, ever. Um, and very much male dominated. Um, uh, but from, from a Rwanda perspective, I also come from a country where uh, women empowerment is at the top of uh, the government's agenda. We have, Rwanda has the highest representation of women parliamentarians in the world at uh, 61%. It dropped slightly from 63%. I guess the men stepped up a bit. So we're at 61% now. Uh, we have, uh, our cabinet is 50% uh, female. Uh, so uh, I, I'm in an environment where uh, women really are in positions of, uh, of, of, of power, I would say. Uh, so that, that, that helps a lot. Uh, but, um, but there's still a lot to be done. Uh, even in the airline, I run there out of the close to 200 pilots, uh, with female pilots only six. Which, which is a tragedy. Um, so we're, we're working really hard uh, to encourage uh, women, uh, uh, girls and uh, young ladies to uh, take up STEM subjects uh, so that they can come into, into the airline industry. With a huge uh, demand of pilots, we will need women uh, more than ever before to step into, into these roles. Not only the technical roles, but all the other different uh, areas in, in, in the aviation. Uh, so it, it has been tough, uh, um, but uh, there's also it's also been good because there's a, the aviation uh, sector. Um, there's a lot of um, support from from uh, uh, my male counterparts. I know I can pick up the phone and uh, ask any one of them for assistance, and they're, they're willing to help. Uh, so it, it has been a challenge, but uh, it's, a, it's a challenge that you know, that can be overcome. Absolutely. Do you have any advice or any sort of uh, message, perhaps you want to you want to just impart uh, to aspiring women in aviation? Um, the main message is um, to have a strong support system, uh, both professionally and uh, at home. Uh, it's a tough business. It's uh, long, long hours, and women are still the primary caregivers anyway. They take care of the whole. They have two jobs, basically. We have two jobs, so you, it's really important uh, to to have a strong support system. I wouldn't be able to do this if I did. I did not have a strong support system and ask for help when you need help uh, and when you don't understand something. Ask. It's all women are always second guessing. We second guess ourselves a lot, um, but ask. That's the only way you learn and ask for help and build a strong support system. Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you.